Hey there, I'm further reading. What I'm showing you is the end result of what I've been building on my Twitch stream over the past couple of days. We've been doing a challenge for it, and part of the challenge for it required me to use a moat for defense. And I decided it'd be fun to fill that moat with lava. And uh, that's what we've done. We have a big pump stack down here that goes down to level, I think it's like minus 114. Yep, it goes down to level minus 116 and pumps the lava all the way up and this is all powered by a dwarven water reactor i decided to use this as an excuse to make some videos about dwarven engineering and the first one is going to be about how we're powering this i'm going to teach you how to build a dwarven water reactor um i actually built too many dwarven reactors i got the matrog but hopefully by following this guide you you won't get the matrog and you won't build too many before i show you how to build it i'll explain what's going on here so these are all screw pumps the screw pumps are set to pump from the south to the north. They're taking water from this hole here and they're pushing it up this way. Connected to each screw pump, we have four water wheels. As the water gets pushed up here, it flows down and causes these wheels to spin. A water wheel will generate 100 power as it's spinning. It doesn't matter how much water is passing through it or how fast. As long as there is water flowing, it's generating 100 power. Meanwhile, a single screw pump takes 10 power to operate which means this is going to be producing more power than it is using. In addition, we have all of our screw pumps wired together using these gear assemblies. What I've done, you can kind of see it here, but I've channeled above this bit that looks like a cog. We have channeled a hole and we've put a gear assembly into the hole and then we've connected them all together. So a screw pump takes 10 energy. A gear assembly takes five energy. This, this axle is six squares wide, which means it's taking six power. So that is going to be six plus 5 plus 10 power is how much each of these modules in the reactor costs. Each wheel will generate 100 power regardless of how much water is flowing through it. Each one of these is going to be creating 400 power, which means that it is giving you uh, 389 power per module. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. So let's talk about how to build one of these modules. What you want to do is go to mining, go to channel. First, we're going to go to channel and we're going to channel out a three by two on both these sides, like so with a gap in the middle. And we're going to channel out one gap over here. That's going to be the space for the water wheels over here and here. And also the space for the pump to bring stuff up from the water below. Then we're going to, go to mine and we're going to finish off this five by five by filling all the gaps. Then we're going to head down one level below and we are gonna, the same things we just drew over here, this mining stuff, we're gonna do down here as well. Just make sure there's somewhere for the water to be at the bottom. Then we have to get a hole up top for our power to be transferred. I like going to the center square, going up once, and we just put a channel in there. This hole is gonna be the hole over here that the gear assembly is on, and that's gonna connect here to the pump that's gonna be sitting over here. It's gonna be taking water out from this square and spraying it here at the top, causing the wheels to spin. At the very end, we also need to add a way for water to get into the reactor, and we do this through this little corner connection here. So I'll go ahead and pop it over here. This is where the water is gonna come in from. The reason we do it from the corner is to take advantage of how water pressure works. It'll prevent the chamber from flooding when we're getting everything ready. I'll explain more about how water pressure works in a future video. Now we have a bit of a shopping list of the components you'll need to get all this ready. For the screw pump, you're going to need an enormous corkscrew and a block and a pipe section. What they're made of doesn't matter because we're only dealing with water. Then you're also going to need a bunch of mechanisms, both to power the gear assembly up top and also to power some of our important OSHA compliant safety measures. In terms of those safety measures, we're going to need a door and a floodgate. Although you can also make do with just two doors. We're also going to need a lever and again, more, more mechanisms. Once everything is built, you're going to press B to open up your build menu. You're going to go to machines and fluids, which is also M. Go to your screw pump and we're going to make sure that we set it to pump from the south to the north. I'm going to plop it right here. You'll know it's facing the right way when you can see this cog is facing towards you. Once the screw pump is built, you can plop the gear assembly up top and also you can plop the water wheels next to them. Then we're going to need to put a door on this open level here and a floodgate down here in this corner access area. Once those are built, you want to take this floodgate and you want to connect it to a lever somewhere in your base so you can open it and allow water to get into your reactor. The final step is going to be to wire up all of your reactors. You should already have your gear assemblies plopped on top. 
So yeah, you're going to want to build axles linking all of these gear assemblies. And then at the very end, uh, where the, the final output is of your reactor, you'll see this is my final output over here. You're going to connect to it, but you're not going to connect this to anything else. So you'll see right now I have an axle here. That's because I'm I'm done building. I've, I've built my pump stack. But for you following this guide, don't build this. Uh, and then in addition, you're going to want to link a lever up to this final gear assembly. That lever is going to be, think of it as a power breaker. You can pull that lever to turn on or turn off power coming out of your reactor. This is kind of like a final little kind of safety check to make sure everything's okay before you link it into any big constructions you made in your base. And that should be all of your building. You've got to wait for it all to finish and for all of your connections to be linked up. Once all your floodgates down here are connected and you don't want to be down here anymore, you should flood the area. Just get some water coming from somewhere else and flood it. And I would recommend waiting until you see sevens everywhere down here. In that case, this whole area is filled up with water and the water is ready to burst forth into all of your reactors. At this point, you can pull a lever which is going to open up all of your floodgates and the water will stop pouring in. If your screw pump system is small enough, it might actually stop powering immediately at this point. Because at this point, water is coming in and it's causing the wheels to flow. But depending on how many are flowing at once, it might start up the reaction. In my case, it was a bit too big and my reaction didn't start straight away. So I had to manually start it. But regardless of whether it starts or not, you want to keep an eye here. And once this area starts filling with mostly sevens, you want to get your dwarf to come back and pull the floodgates again. The reason that we want them to close the floodgates afterwards is as this is pulling water up, it's going to be making this area more shallow. You can see here all of these fives and fours and there's even the two down here. This area is pretty shallow now. If this was open, water would come in here to replace the missing water, while then the missing water would also get pushed down here. So the amount of water would grow and grow and grow and grow inside the chamber to the point where this will end up being flooded and your pump will stop. So that's why you want to close it as soon as it's full. It's going to be the same body of water moving around and you won't have any risk of flooding. If you have a situation like mine where it doesn't start right away, all you have to do is unlock these doors, then click on the pump and click on start pump manually. This is going to ask a dwarf to come down and pump it. And just do this on like a whole bunch of them. And once a critical mass of pumps are going and the power coming out of the system is more than the power it needs to run all the rest of the pumps, your dwarves will notice that mechanical power can take over and they will stop on their own. At that point, it's all automated. You can lock the door again just in case there's any issues with flooding. Once everything's running, I'm going to come back up here to the top and check to make sure. You should see all of your gear assemblies are twisting as well as your axles. And if you set everything up properly and you followed my instructions earlier, you should have no axle here and this should not be moving. Everything before it will be, this will not be moving. If this is moving, then double check to make sure you've set the lever up and pull that lever again and make sure this is stopped. Once this is stopped, then you build the axle to link it to whatever device that needs the power. And once it's linked, then you pull the lever to start up. You should see this start twisting and this start twisting and your device should activate. If everything stops moving, that could indicate that maybe there's too much power needed or there's some other issue going on. You'll have to check further to see what it is. But hopefully things have worked out. You followed the guide properly. You did the math properly and you should be seeing your lovely device coming and you should see start seeing the world get filled with lava. And there we go. That is how you set up a sequence of dwarven water reactors and how you start them up and how you can use them to power various devices within your fort. I hope you found this guide useful. If you have any other questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. And if you want to watch more of me, you can catch me on Twitch where I stream four nights a week. You can like and subscribe for more. And you can watch any of the videos on screen right now.